The PGA Tour of Australasia has made the journey to the mining town of Kalgoorlie in Western Australia. About a seven hour drive to the northeast of Perth, Kalgoorlie has a golden history. Australia's biggest outback city was founded in 1893 after a lucky man called Paddy Hannon stumbled across 100 ounces of golden nuggets whilst changing his horse's shoes. The city of 30,000 people is the host for this week's event, the TX Civil and Logistics WA PGA Championship, and there's little doubt the stunning Kalgoorlie Golf Course will provide the perfect setting. The course was completed in 2010 under the watchful eye of its Kalgoorlie-born designer, Graham Marsh. With its red ochre earth and pristine green fairways, the 18-hole layout truly is a delight to the eye. Hello and welcome to PGA TV here at the beautiful Kalgoorlie Golf Course. My name's Alison Whitaker and after two rounds, we really do have a host of players in the mix here. Peter Wilson was the man to catch going into Saturday, but there's 10 guys within three shots of the lead. So it really is anyone's game here at the TX Civil and Logistics WA PGA Championship. 2012 New South Wales PGA Champion Matt Steger is in the mix. After rounds of 68 and 69, the 26-year-old started the day in fourth place. Lee McKechnie has only one bogey to his name so far in the event. Consecutive rounds of 68 left him just one shot off the lead. Two thousand and eight champion Michael Long reigns supreme at the cut in Perth. Can he make the move here in Kalgoorlie, seven hours inland? Today he'll play alongside this man, Ash Hall. After shooting seventy three on day one, Hall's chances had all but faded. That was before he shot sixty six yesterday. The equal low round of the day catapulted him into the top ten. Queensland's Jack Munro was steady yesterday on his way to a seventy one. The 29-year-old used to be a cardiac technician. Can he keep his pulse steady going into the weekend? So this is how things stood after two rounds here at Kalgoorlie Golf Course. Peter Wilson clings on to a one-shot lead going into round three with a host of players trying to chase him down. Can he strike it rich here in the mining town? We'll find out. Let's catch up with some of the action out on the golf course. I'm joined in the commentary box by Jared Lull. Jared, welcome. Thank you, Alison. It's lovely to be here. As we see Stephen Dartnell here on screen. This is on the 10th hole, his second shot, and a very tidy little approach there for the defending champion. Yeah, nice little uh, start to his second nine holes today. Jared Felton, three top tens in three attempts. He's certainly a player to watch. Picked up his second victory at the New Zealand PGA Championship earlier this year. So much talent, the 22-year-old. And Stephen Dartnell, this for birdie. A little bit down the hill, sliding to the right. And obviously, I'm not reading the greens very well, as you can tell by my scores, and uh, nice little tap in for par there. You said the holes were a bit too small here in Kalgoorlie. Obviously, you haven't seen the super pair. I did see the super pit. That's a very, very big hole. But, uh, yeah, I'm just struggling to hold putts this week, which is unfortunate, but that's life. Well, this man certainly hasn't been having too many issues on the green. He says he's been working on his putting pretty hard. And this from long range for birdie for Dimmy Papadados. And he makes it drop. The big man loves it. Nice little uh, tip of the cap there, too, to the I camera. I know. Hates the camera, that guy. Josh Younger. This also... For Birdie, playing alongside Papadados. Anything you can do, Josh Younger can do as well. Very nice from the Victorian. Write that one down in your stats book. Now, this is uh, 
Matt Steger, two holes later. Two groups, I should say. Coming up a little bit short there, though, for his birdie. So work left to do, and he's playing alongside this man. Lee McKechnie, very, very solid player. Been an ultimate journeyman here in the Australian Tour. Be looking to, uh, to knock this in for his par. Perfect. That's all you need to do, isn't it, around this golf course? Just make a couple of putts, hit on the right section of the green, perhaps. That's really key to making a good score around this golf course. And Steg has left himself a little bit of work here, but uh, takes care of that nicely with a, a solid stroke. No trouble at all. And Victorian Rory Burke, his second, also into the fifth. He's been playing very nicely of late too, Rory. Yep. Shooting some good scores over here in Western Australia in the Pro-Am series just leading up to this event. So it's good to see him continuing his good form. Doing a lot of work with Darren Cole back in Victoria. And Peter Wilson, our leader after day one and day two, but two very different stories in the first two rounds, 64 and a 71. So he clung on to his lead, but he's having a bit of trouble here on the fifth. That was his fourth shot. So definite drop shots coming up for him. Now Rory, after his uh, solid approach into the green here, got his putt for birdie. As you can tell by the, the vision there, it's this, the greens are very, very sloping. Lots of little ridges and things to contend with. And uh, the quick walk, Allison, sort of means not a very good putt. As a general rule, we'll see if Peter Wilson can stop the rot, as we say on tour. And the answer is no. So it's going to be likely a double bogey for him. Can Burke clean up for his four? The answer is yes. He's been pretty solid so far this week. Two consecutive 68s. And that's a double bogey for Peter Wilson. Hi, I'm Ash Hall. I'm from Berwick Montuna Golf Club. You're watching PGA TV. Back nine I'm worried about. I'm worried won't worry about my back. <laughs> <laughs> so how are those pro lessons going? Well, let's see. Well played. Thanks, mate. Found it! Looks like a bit of a tricky shot you got there, mate. You had a bogey, and what did you have? A pop. Back to back. Nice work. Someone told me that um, the ball is not my best friend, and I count one, two, three, and then I hit the ball. I like the sound when it hits like bang. I like the noise. The ninth tee, it's a long par four, and it's the 18th hole for the members here in regulation play. We have switched the nines, but one thing I want to point out to you is how cheeky Graham Marsh has been on this hole, because you can see this tee lines you up 
straight down towards those right bunkers. So important to take a little bit of care with your alignment off the tee. And then once you move down towards the fairway, three bunkers that really come into play off the drive. One on the left, one on the right, and one in the middle. So a 236 carry over that one in the center and you'll be fine. This white dot is 105 to the front of the green. So if you found this point, you've hit a pretty nice drive into what is one of the most approachable greens on the golf course. Not too much slope. That bunker on the right is still pretty friendly by Graham Marsh standards. So important to just keep yourself below the hole if possible to set up your birdie part. This green is 39 metres long. And when you think about it, that's about a three to four club difference between your approach shots. So, Again, taking advantage off the fairway is going to be key and getting that yardage right even more so. Once you get up onto the green, you can see a little bit of a slope here on the left hand side, but pretty flat over towards that section of the green. So we're going to see a lot of birdies made from over there. Nine, of course, playing downwind a little off the left today. So it is playing well short of that yardage at the moment. This is Max McArdle for his birdie. Twenty-six on the order of merit last year. And that one just shying by for Max. Playing alongside this gentleman. Picked up his most recent trophy last year at the Victorian Open. Michael Long. He's always just pops up every now and then in a tournament, Michael Long. He's a very, very solid player and uh, it's always nice to see him do well. So true, and he tapped in for his bogey there, so a drop shot for Michael Long, but Max McArdle has a chance here for his four. Should be a pretty standard task, it is. And just a group later, this is Josh Younger. His approach into nine. It's playing so much shorter today, isn't it, out there? It is playing a lot shorter today, as you can see, with that breeze blowing down off the left. And, uh, you know, the, the difficult task is to get the right, uh, the right section of the green. Surprised this gentleman isn't almost putting. Dimi Papadados, he can get it out there. But a bit of an unforced error there, perhaps, with his second. So work left to do. And this was the birdie chance. massive slope on this green yeah it tilts very much from left to right and uh you know that, that that ball just keep trickling and trickling down there and looks like he's left it a little bit short but you know again he'd be very very happy with that putt there are a few greens out here that you really do have to almost aim for the front edge just because of the steepness of the slopes and sometimes you can hit it on the green in the wrong spot and, and almost have an impossible chance to, to two-putt it. So you've got to be very wary of your second shots into the greens. And a really nice approach here for Josh Younger. So a birdie chance for him. Now it's a nice stroke. What can you tell us about Josh's game, Jared? Josh is very solid. He... Um, you know, he, he's, he's got the ability to shoot some really, really low scores and and he always sort of pops up, like Michael Long, he pops up into contention every now and then in, in big Aussie events and it's, it's always nice to see Josh playing well and, and continue the good form. Speaking of good form, this is Damian Jordan. He picked up his first ever title at the Victorian PGA Championship earlier this year. He's a man that spent 12 months over the years in heavy combat and it's great to see him up again at the top of the leaderboard, or near it at least. Matt Steger, pretty nice drive down here. Yeah, this is the uh, one of the widest fairways on the golf course, so it's it's pretty hard to miss it. But uh, you get it running down the hill there, and it doesn't uh, doesn't leave you with too much into the green. And he doesn't look particularly happy with that one Alison. I think we call that the chunk and not run actually that's the chunk and spin so <laughs> a bit of a shake of the head there for Matt. It's gone with the old Texas wedge too it's you know a little daunting after you just chunk one from the fairway to grab another wedge and try and chip it up there. To be fair there are quite a few tight lies out on the golf course out there especially in some of the the wetter patches in the collection areas. 
Tell you what, this will be a very disappointing bogey if he misses this. Don't put the mozzie on him, you did! Sorry, Matty. He's going to have words with you after the round. Sleep with one eye open, Jared Lyle. Take a number. <laughs> and in his 20th season as a pro, Lee McKechnie. He's in the mix. He's lurking very quietly. Won the 2009 New South Wales Open. But that putt could have used just a couple more rolls. He's looking at that putt a little perplexed, but, uh, mate, just didn't quite carry enough speed. Hi, I'm Damien Jordan from Cool and Gatta Tweed Eds, and you're watching PGA TV. and then you come across a hole where you really do have to produce a shot shape. The 11th tee is one of those. It's 518 metres long, it's par five. But as you can see, there's plenty of foliage overhanging on that right hand side. So draw is not an option here because long left is ugly. A power fade just up the right centre would be ideal off the tee. If you've pulled your tee shot just a little bit off the green, you might find yourself in this left hand bunker. It's around about 270 metres off the tee and you'll find yourself in the sand so that almost rules out going for the green in two. However, if you hit it down here on this nice little patch of fairway, you're looking at around about 200 metres to the front of the green so it really does open up this epic risk reward hole with the bunkers on the front right and the drop off on the left. Despite being 30 metres long, this 11th green actually plays a little bit smaller than that in reality and that's because of the sections. This front left section for example runs from front to back so that's something to take into account on your approach shot and then the green extends back into that little peninsula over in the back right section so if you can hit to the middle of that you're going to set yourself up with a pretty good eagle or birdie chance. We're out on the 11th hole the par 5 here at Kalgoorlie Golf Course and this is Jack Munro for his eagle just off the green on the par 5 it is lengthy it's still rolling but that should be a birdie chance for him. Very good lag putt from off the green there. It's interesting, a lot of the par fives actually have, have quite a bit of slope running from the front to the back of the green as well, particularly here on 11. And this is a very difficult green to hit in too because it sort of sits at you on a, on a very funny angle and you know it takes two very good shots to, uh, to hit the green and, and keep it on there. Yeah, that was a par for Damien Jordan. And another look back at the line there, needed. Just three feet left for birdie for Jack Munro. Can the 29-year-old make it count on the par five? And the answer is yes. So shot gained there for Jack as we wait a few moments for the next group to come through. This is Matt Steger. He's up by the green in two. So this is his third shot. And that is absolutely lovely from Matt Steger. That'll make up for that uh, tiny bit of disappointment on the ninth hole, won't it? It's funny how that happens in golf. You always 
have the chance to just claw your way back in as Matt has to this event here at the TX Civil and Logistics WA PGA Championship. And and Lee McKechnie going with the old Texas wedge as well. From a similar position to Matt, but that one coming up quite a way short. Looked to have a bit of mud on the ball, so that might have been the reasoning behind the flat stick. So this is a birdie chance for Lee now. Perfect. Yeah, great putt, Matty. Perfect putt there for Birdie. So he's uh, picked That's up another nice. shot and looking forward to going to the short par 4 12th. Just the mere formality of waiting for his amateur partner to putt out. We do have the road to the outback alongside the main event here in Kalgoorlie. Peter Wilson, it's his third shot. He usually has a pretty handy short game, but left himself a bit of a tester there for his birdie. Now Rory Burke going with his putter off the green again. Bit of a common theme going on at the moment when you're just off the edge. And that one is racing. Well, the direction was right. The speed, not so much for Rory. Now, a bit of a tough task left for his birdie. So this could be a real unforced error for him. Oh, painful. Painfully close. It was a good try, but he'd ob obviously be very disappointed, uh, you know, being just at the front of the green for two and, and walking off with a with a par there. That's it. Bit of a slap on the wrist for you there, Rory. Peter Wilson, however, he has a chance. Playing in our final group today. They went off at 9.30. Oh, close but no cigar for Peter Wilson. So a painful par, no drop shots, but that one will hurt. Hi, I'm Peter Lunnard. I'm Aaron Townsend. I'm Dave Branston. I'm from Sale Golf Club, and you're watching PGA TV. <laughs> <laughs> One day maybe I'd like to be a professional golfer. So when I'm older, I'd like a house on the golf course. It'd be fun, I could just walk and play, and then just go back home, relax, and then go again. <laughs> Welcome back to PGA TV here at the TX Civil and Logistics WA PGA Championship. Now, nice to see Sandy Jamison there in that promo. We've both been coached by Sandy. You still are, Jared. Yeah, I still see Sandy quite a bit, so it's uh, it's always nice to, to see his mug on TV and uh, hear the little wise words of uh, pearls and gems and whatever you call them that he likes to give out to all his students. And all of those jokes as well that come along with it. Now, why don't we take a look at the 15th hole, the par four? 15's a, uh, it's a very, very strong par four. Slightly dog legs to the left, and uh, you gotta be very accurate with your tee shot. You can see just coming up here, there's a group of little gum trees on the right-hand side. We're just flying past now. That's a perfect line for your tee shot. And then uh, the second shot into the green's tough because there's about three different levels on there. And with the flag on the front left today, it's probably the, the most accessible flag that we have all week, but uh, still very hard to get near it. Seems to be a common theme here at Kalgoorlie Golf Course. Graham Marsh, he was cheeky with the design, but it certainly is visually stunning here. As we see, Max McArdle, his second 
into 15. He's got it on the right level, but he's still a fair way away from the hole. Speaking of a little ways from the hole, I think Michael Long is taking the desert route to the green. This is his third shot. Seems to be staring that one down. As are we. So a little bit short for the New Zealander. It's not too bad out of there. It's very difficult to judge how the ball's going to fly out because there's lots of little pebbles and, and debris that's always around your golf ball that uh, can make it very difficult to judge. Interestingly enough, Michael Long is actually the general manager of a golf club back home and it was nice of him to let him have the week off to come here and play. He's certainly making the most of it. And I've jinxed him a little bit there. Does it roll up? No, that's all right. Still within reach of uh, what will be a bogey for him. Max McArdle from long range. Again, just carried a little bit too much speed there. It's easy to let the putts get away from you seemingly around this golf course. Just with that, that much elevation change on the greens, you almost need to step them out. Ooh. Not happy, Max McArdle. One thing I've found, Alison, out there the last couple of days is sometimes you can hit a putt and you think it's sort of downhill and you, you don't hit it hard enough and it tends to stop quickly, but... When you feel like it's uphill and you give it that little bit extra, it doesn't doesn't stop. It just keeps going. So it's it's very easy to run putts a long way past. Certainly important to type the right postcode in on these greens, trying to navigate your way around them. This is Dimi Papadados, his second, from over on the right on the 15th hole. Very easy to flare your tee shot there right too because there's a bit of a uh, creek, a dry creek that runs down the left-hand side and you don't have to turn it over too much to get in there. So it's very easy to lose it to the right. As is this one for Josh Younger. Ball just a little bit above his feet out, out of the first cut of rough. And that's just dropped down short over by his amateur partner's ball. And Dimi Papadados requiring a little bit of touch here. Yes, he's done it okay there. Yeah, he's left himself a putt straight up the hill to, uh, to save his par. Josh Younger, over to you. Nearly got to leave the putter in the bag. Instead has a t testy par save left. Dimmy with his par putt. Pretty straight putt here up the hill. and Got the pace right, but the wrong line. These greens are pretty tricky to get the measure of. If you can get on the right section, that is shake of the head there. So... It was costly off the tee, really, for Papadados. Will it be for Josh Younger? For pa? No, Josh. So, painful bogeys there for both players in that group. Jack Munro, really nice posture in his setup. This is his second shot. We're looking to play a nice little draw to get into this front left flag position. That would be ideal. Not sure where that one's ended up. We'll find out in just a moment. Damien Jordan takes the club back a little bit steep, then drops it around into the inside. So he does do pretty well with the draw. That one below the hole. This is where Jack's second shot finished up in the left-hand bunker. He's obviously turned it over a little bit too far into that flag and, and left himself a very tough bunker shot. That was tough. So about 12 feet left for par for Munro. Different story here for Damien Jordan. So a chance to get one back on the field. Left himself in a good spot here. Putting up the hill. A little bit of left to right break on it. Oh, don't leave it short. That's the only rule in the rule book for a pro, isn't it? Don't leave those putts short especially on the birdies and the eagle chances. Now Jack, after his bunker shot, now he's got this left for par. Pretty straight putt. Oh, and just catches a little bit of the right edge, but unfortunately doesn't drop. It is going to be 
a five for Jack Munro. Common theme here at the 15th. This is Lee McKechnie. And he's a long way back. He's left himself a very long second shot into uh, into the green there. Lee doesn't hit it as far as, as the younger guys do these days. So uh, he's judged it okay. No, oh, he's only 43. He's still got some, some good golf left in him. Matt Steger. Easy to catch a flyer out of this first cut when the ball's sitting up that way. But that one has found the little swale collection area that's been a popular spot so far in round three. And look at that, the flat stick out again. Flat stick straight up the ridge. Running towards the hole, but it looks like it's going to come up a fair way short. I think he's going to be a little bit disappointed with that one. Yet to see anyone get that shot past the pin here on 15. It's hard to judge with the, the way the grass is. It tends to bounce a little bit. So, yeah, very, very difficult to judge. This for a three not to beat. So at least a par for McKechnie. And this is also for a par for Steger. So he is not happy. I think I'm pretty sure he just yelled out socks. That's what I do when I'm... Very angry on the golf course. I feel your pain, Matt. And a solid little two and a half footer there for Lee McKechnie's par. He'll be very happy to walk away with the par there after he's, he's short his tee shot. This is Peter Wilson. Now he's tugged his tee shot over into... It's almost a, a riverbed over there, isn't it? On the left side in the dirty sand. Work left to do for him. Rory's hit a perfect tee shot there, left himself a good angle into this front left-hand flag location. And judged his second shot exceptionally well. That is very nice. Now, can Peter Wilson get this past the pin? We're yet to see anyone do it. And the answer is still no. Rory for birdie. Oh... A look to the skies for a bit of help, and unfortunately it didn't come. Yeah, and a shake of the head. He knew that was a massive opportunity missed. That approach shot deserved a birdie. Hi, I'm Damien Jordan. Hi there, I'm Steve Jeffrey from Southport. I'm Matt Griffin from Victoria Golf Club, and I hope you're enjoying PGA TV. Back nine I'm worried about. I don't worry, won't worry about my back. <laughs> <laughs> so how are those pro lessons going? Well, let's see. Well played. Thanks, mate. Found it! Looks like a bit of a tricky shot you got there, mate. You had a bogey, and what did you have? A pop. Back to back. Nice work. My name's Isaac Richards. I'm a good golfer, and I like hitting socks out of the bunker.
This is the final hole, the 18th, and it's a 538 metre par five. And I have to say that Graham Marsh has done a great job with it because you can't avoid the fact that you're out in the country. It's a beautiful little dogleg round to the right with a waste area that continues all the way up the right hand side of the hole. So important to hit the fairway because the green's pretty tricky and you need a short club in. The main thing you need to be aware of on the 18th is the wasteland that runs through the driving area and the layup area. That's about 312 metres through that area. So you need to keep it short of that. And then the choice is yours. Do you take on the green in two and go for gold? No pun intended in this part of the world. Or do you lay back and give yourself a wedge in? It's a tricky play, but it might be the safer of the two. Send out a cooey. Send out a hello, hello, hello. Because that's how long it's going to take you to get from the front of this green to the back. This thing is massive. In the yardage book, they've actually split this green into two. It was like the calculations were just too much. And you can see why. The top section, way up there on the hill, the second section, also pretty attackable, but then you go down this huge slope, again, down to the third section of the green, which is defended by that little bunker on the right. But if you do go back to that little area over on the right-hand side, it's a pretty decent angle to attack the pin, so potential eagle chance. I've seen this 18th hole played about 25 different ways. What can Dimi Papadados produce? You think it's better to play it as a three-shot hole, Jared, or, or try and crack it up by the green? Look, it depends on where the flag is. I think what Dimmy's done there is, is miss the green a little bit short and to the right, which is going to give him a, a pretty good angle and, you know, chipping back up into the hill. So true, especially if that pin is on the front of the green. You really do want to take a bit of a different play. But this is Papadados. It's his third shot, and it's tracking. Well, only a few inches away from Eagle there. That was pretty well judged. I have a bit of a right to left putt left. This is Josh Younger. He's just gone through, slipped through the green. This is his third shot as well. Both players in this group getting up near the pin in two. Can they convert? Sadly not for Josh Younger. He'll be a little bit disappointed when he uh, taps this in for par and, and, and signs his card. He'll realise that he probably gave a shot back there by not making his birdie. Not something you want to do on moving day. Stands a long way from the ball, Papadados, when he's putting. Usually you see pros with their eye line in line with the ball directly over it, but you'll notice that his is actually almost out past the, key, the peak of his cap which is not something you see too often. No, and again, a pretty disappointing par for Dimmy there to finish the round, but he's got himself in a great position for uh, the, the fourth round on Sunday. Shake hands with the amateurs and with each other and head off to the range, perhaps. Damien Jordan in an interesting spot here in two, so that was his third. Bit of an interesting shot selection there, Alison. Try and run it up onto the green. Yeah, the little bump and run into the hill. And that running through a sprinkler head, maybe. I'm not sure if that was part of the plan. Two almighty shots to get here for Jack Munro. This but would be an eagle. The good news is he's got it on the right level, which That's is a very, so very difficult thing to do. You've got three levels to choose from, as we saw earlier. That was a pretty solid roll. Now yeah, Damien Jordan for his par. Ooh, catches a little bit of the edge. That bogey's going to sting. And it's not the kind of memory you want to go and eat dinner thinking about later on that night. Yet to see anyone really capitalise on this par five. No, the last few groups have been in great positions to, to make birdies and hopefully Jack can be the one that uh, takes the birdie away. And he does. Yeah, a bit angry, understandably. Being so close to the pin in two shots and Damien Jordan is going to walk away with a bogey. 
frustrating end to what was a pretty good day. Lee McKechnie playing. This is a three-shot hole. He's been pretty steady so far this week. He has, and he's left himself in a pretty good position there where he can he can throw the ball up in the air a little bit and use the slope just like that to get it somewhere near the hole, which was a pretty well-judged shot from, from that far back for his third. Yeah, right on cue there, Lee, using the sideboard, not the backboard really, but the slope absolutely perfectly. Can Matt Steger produce something of a similar calibre Wow, he's launched that thing way up in the air. In the clouds. Oh, <laughs> nearly holing out as well. A bit unlucky not to get some more spin on that. Just a testament to how much slope there is on this green. McKechnie to post 10 under par total. And it won't be, so he's going to finish at 9 under. But he's still the man to catch at the moment. Not sure if he knows that yet, but top of the leaderboard, not a bad place to be. Oh, and a great read and a pretty good putt there from Matt Steger. That was a good try. That would have been a, a great finish to his round. Obviously, he's let a few shots slip in the middle there that we've seen, and that birdie would have been great. Well... The man to catch, our outright leader, was Lee McKechnie. He finished off with a round of 71 today. We heard his thoughts after the round. Lee, you're up at the top of the leaderboard. Talk to us a little bit about your day today. Um, well, it was pretty good, actually. I played pretty solid. Um, last few days have been pretty solid, to be honest. Uh, so just trying to do the same thing, hopefully, tomorrow. You turned pro in 1997, so this is your 20, 20th season, correct, I believe? Have you lost count yet? No, it's getting that way. Thanks for reminding me. No, <laughs> no, one, of the vet, one of the veterans these days, so uh, no, it's all good. No, I'm still enjoying it. So, um, yeah, these young guys out here, they uh, hit a long way, and uh, I'm just trying to fight for the old guys these days. <laughs> well, I was going to ask, how is your relationship with the game at the moment? Because it is a little bit almost like a marriage of sorts, because it, it has its ebbs and flows. Obviously, you're uh, finding some bit of a bit of form at the moment. Yeah, the last few months have been okay. Um, I do a bit of Uber driving on the side just to uh, keep things ticking along. But uh, I've been playing okay the last few months. I feel like my swing's sort of getting there. Um, had some help back home with Simon Deep back at Terry Hills, and uh, yeah, we're just trying to uh, make a few putts and um, just put ourselves in contention, really. Yeah, is there anything specific that you're working on with your putting? Uh, not really. I've always been sort of fairly solid. Um, just do the usual sort of drills that I do. Um, and obviously picking the speed here is probably the most important because they are running quite quite quick this week. Um, so try not to leave myself too many ticklish downhillers. Yep. Now, Uber driving, I have to ask, you must have had some interesting trips so far. Any that spring to mind? Oh, actually, <coughs> there's, some, there's a few I actually can't, can't actually mention on camera. <laughs> um, but no, there's been a whole, a whole bunch of people back in Newcastle that have been really good to me. And uh, it's just when I feel like uh, putting the golf clubs down for a couple of weeks, so I uh, just go and do a bit of driving or do a few kilometres as, as it is. So... Uh, that's uh, just to keep things ticking along when uh, when the schedule's quiet. Fair enough. Well, hopefully your driving's on point tomorrow on the golf course. Best of luck. Very good. Thank you. Perhaps one of the more unique jobs in between tournaments, driving. Have you ever thought about that, Jared? No. No, I've never <laughs> thought about being an Uber <laughs> driver, so good luck to him. You're too busy driving your two young girls around. That one just down the slope. It's a popular spot today, and as we said, not the worst place to be. It does require just a little bit of spin here for Peter Wilson, and that is picture perfect. It's one of the best pitch, pitch shots we've seen into the last hole. Can Burke respond? Oh, <laughs> nearly in for eagle. Well, if that had dropped, he would have been in the outright lead. At 10 under par, he's got this to join McKechnie at 9 under. Total walks it in. Confidence there from the Victorian. And a tip of the cap to the crowds. Got a nice little bar set up over on the 18th and uh, I predict that might get a little rowdy come Sunday afternoon. That was two very good birdies by our final group today. Rory Burke now in an equal lead. We had a chat after his round. 
Rory, good job so far this week. Talk us through a little bit about your round out there today in particular. Uh, it was a bit slow, really. We just we just couldn't quite get the birdies early. Um, I made a good birdie on one of the holes early, but I mean, we had chances all day long, and we just couldn't hold apart. So then it, you know, it sort of drains you a little bit, and then uh, making a few soft bogeys always hurts. But uh, birdie the last, which was nice. It's kind of a hole you want a birdie, but with a tough pin and the three tee green, I mean, you just got to play it as, as well as you can and uh, and hope to have a putt at it, which luckily I did, so it's good. Yeah. What's your impressions of the golf course as a whole? Obviously, you know, it'd be so easy to have kind of a throwaway desert course, but it's actually a pretty stunning design. Yeah, it's quite fantastic, actually. Um, I play, my local course that I play at is designed by the same guy, and it's it's very, very similar, without the dirt, obviously. Uh, but uh, very similar holes, and uh, so I quite like the design. Um, there's a few things that are a little funky, as I said, with the three-tier green and things like that, but... I mean, if you know how to play them and, uh, and you just take it for what it is, you know, you can, you can go quite well on it. Now you've been road tripping around WA and you had a win on the Labrokes Pro-Am series a couple of weeks ago. Uh, talk, <laughs> talk to us about, you know, the, the concept of going on a road trip. You and Andy Martin have been travelling mm-hmm. together. Yeah, yeah, we've been travelling for, uh, well, it's going to be five weeks when we finish up, uh, all in WA. So we just, you know, we flew over here, got the hire car and we've been everywhere. And uh, we've got to go, we went five hours north we're eight hours inland and then we got another three hours south uh we hit a kangaroo last week so i mean we've had we've had some adventures it's been good fun but uh we've had some low times hitting a kangaroo but um yeah winning the first day we got here actually the um we got in and the very next day we uh we played at hartfield and was lucky enough to come away with a win which was nice yeah, it's always nice to pick up a check yeah, yeah. <laughs> no i had such low expectations so it was uh that was probably the uh the main reason, I think. Is that going to be a goal of yours today to keep those expectations low, keep in the moment? I'm going to try to. I mean, I haven't led going into the final round before. Um, I've been up there a couple of times. We're not quite leading. So, um, I mean, I'll try and just take it as it comes. Uh, and I'm playing with Lee tomorrow, which we get along really well. So it'll be nice. We have a chat all day and he's probably thinking the same. So uh, a lot of guys right behind though. So we can get off to a hot start. I'll try not to let it creep into my mind until right at the end. All right. We'll just go with the flow and go get him tomorrow. Thank you. Cheers. It's been a great round three, some surprise finishes out there, a couple of great rounds on the golf course as well, and the Roos were certainly enjoying it, as were we here in the commentary box. Many thanks go to Jared Lyle for his company here tonight, and let's check out the state of play at the end of the day. There's two in front, Lee McKechnie and Rory Burke, holding a one-shot lead over the rest of the field, a couple of winners in the chasing pack there, Papadados, along with Matt Steger, Peter Wilson, and the ever-consistent Matthew Miller. And a host of players rounding out the top 10 here in Kalgoorlie. It's been a great day, enjoyed by all. That's it from all of us here at PGA TV. You've been watching the round three highlights here at the TX Civil and Logistics WA PGA Championship. Tune in tomorrow. We've got five hours live. Myself and Chura Taft will be behind the mics along with a couple of special guests, maybe a couple of players as well. We hope you can join us.